Hello. A very quick story this morning before I go off to my first session at the no in the Northern Quarter. It's called Bees, and it's by Ellie Williams from A Trib. Bees. I was awake for three reasons. One, you live near a tube stop, and it was firing up for the first journey of the day. Two, there's a bird in the tree outside your window, and it was shouting at your house. I don't know what kind of bird it was, nor the type of tree. Thirdly, you had trapped a bee in a glass last night and forgotten to let it out. The intention was clearly there to transport it down the stairs or tip it out of the window, and you had slid a postcard of Vienna or St. Petersburg or that sort of place beneath the tumbler in readiness. It was not actually a tumbler at all, but a washed-out jar of Nutella, and the bee was drunk on a whole night's worth of staring at the sights of Vienna or St. Petersburg, and the city's ghosts of hazelnuts and sugar dink, dink, dinking its head against a transparent wall on your bedside table. Trapped beneath your arm, I blinked at the bee, Bees can see in UV light, so we must have looked like a ridiculous disco last night. It headbanged an answer to this thought, eyes all honeycombed and asterisk star kaleidoscopic, while outside the bird shouted a little louder. I'm sure there is an identification app that allows you to run through an index of birds, toccatas and scherzos and bugled blurts. As you thumb down the list, little facts about birds might run in a scrolling marquee along the bottom of your screen. The bones of a pigeon weigh less than its feathers. That kind of thing. Starlings only exist in America because a man wanted to, to introduce all the birds mentioned in Shakespeare's plays to the continent. The organ in a bird's throat that, that allows it to sing is called a syrinx. I test this word now between my teeth and feel it is a far sprightlier and more lovelier word than larynx. This was a good call on the anatomist's part. You stir, as I say, larynx aloud and turn a little, causing crow feet folds in your pillow around your head. Sleepily, I wonder whether there could be an equivalent app for identifying bees by their song before remembering that they do not sing. Not for us, anyway. They dance. I make a note to look up bee facts later in the day for balance's sake. Just yesterday I read a study that found older honeybees effectively reverse brain ageing when they take on those nest re responsibilities that are typically handed, handled by much younger bees. Bee brain, I say softly out loud, and the crow feet of your pillow deepen imperceptibly. I always thought that birdsong was supposed to be lovely, But here was this blackbird slash thrush slash starling slash finch going full alarm alarm crazy. I can't believe you stared at larynx and bee brain but can sleep right through this going on outside your window. Maybe the unseen bird had carved bird for bee forever with its beak on the tree trunk outside in, a, outside in a big old notch heart. Or perhaps it was shouting the passerine equivalent of Oi mate, are you looking at me, at me bee? <laughs> and the bee is performing a mournful ballonne and brise on a Venetian or Peterburgian, Peterburgian balcony while I'm tangled up here caught in the euphemisms and innuendos of the shadows of a pillow only half awake and thinking that I should leave. The bird and the bee could set up, I think, a lovely bee and bee and serve their guests toast with honey and eggs. Who am I to keep them apart, I thought.
A bee in the hand worth two in the bonnet, I think, and I pick up the glass and stumble to the window that is not mine, and now the window is open, and the glass is overturned, and the bee has flown out by my ear and become a comma in the air, and the blackbird slash thrush slash starling slash finch joined it in the air. And the commuters at the station beneath your window applauded the bee and the bird and the considerate naked woman with her arms flung out, framed in the window above the pl the platform, as if this was an opera. And then the same commuters stepped into the train, and the curved glass of the carriage doors shut behind them, and all of this is a half-sleep thought of a euphemism, of a metaphor, of a ghost of the word for the sight of you opening an eye and saying good morning and that the thought of you as a bird or as a bee might always be worth waking to <laughs> that was bees by ellie williams from atrib here atrib thank you for listening i hope you've enjoyed it <laughs>